What's up everybody? Welcome to Westside Vineyard Kids Church. I'm on! I'm so excited to be here with you this week. If you were here last week, you'll remember that we're training for an all-out, all-in, epic, blow-your-mind kind of race. Today, I'm training for the biking and the hiking portion of the race. And training for a race like this takes commitment, and commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. I'm trying to stick to my workout plan, but sticking to a plan isn't always easy. I don't know about you, but sometimes I get distracted. Hey, does anybody else out there listen to music when you're doing other things like exercising or doing homework or getting ready for bed? Yeah, I find that listening to music while I'm working out keeps me totally motivated, but I guess it depends on the song. I mean, I could totally work out to a song like this. But not so much to this one. makes me want to crawl into my bed and take a nap. Sometimes it's just the wrong time to listen to music because we need to listen to the things going on around us. Like when I ride my bike, I need to be able to hear if there are people coming from behind me or if I have to ride in the road for a little portion of my ride, I need to be able to hear the traffic. No matter what, listening is a very helpful and important thing to do. Now everybody, up on your feet. Now it's time to get our ears and our hearts working with some worship to God. Let's kick off our time of praise today with the song about choosing and committing to following Jesus. He's so good. He is faithful. He will never let us down. Let's believe and sing out these words today. Jesus, I will trust you. Let's go. Jesus is always good. We can always put our trust in Him. 
I love these words from Psalm 89 1. Lord, I will sing about your great love forever. For all time to come, I will tell how faithful you are. For every day that will come, God will remain faithful. It's who he is. He's good and trustworthy forever. We read in the Bible that we are children of God. God is our Father, and he loves us more than we could ever imagine. Let's lift our voices up to him right now. Come on. Bible message for our lives is a parable. Parables are those stories that Jesus would tell to help us understand his teaching better. He told this one in a message he gave called the Sermon on the Mount. That's why the next part of my workout is a hike. This parable is about a guy who listened really well and another one who didn't. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. It's the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and had their lives changed forever. And now Jesus teaches us all about the best foundation for our faith practice found in the book of Matthew, chapter 7. All right, Vineyard Kids, it's time to hike. It's my favorite place to hike in all of LA. So beautiful. So beautiful. Here we go. After Jesus was baptized and spent time alone in the wilderness, he returned to Galilee. There, he began teaching and gathering his disciples. Great crowds began following Jesus everywhere he went. So, 
one day he climbed up a mountainside and began teaching his closest friends. Many others joined to listen. You are the light of the world. This is quite the sermon on the mount. Jesus shared all kinds of wisdom about the way God wants us to live. At the end, he shared a vivid word picture. So then, everyone who hears my words and puts them into practice is like a wise man. Oh, here we are at one of my favorite places to practice hearing from God. Can you see why? This is the perfect place for our lesson today. So about that vivid word picture at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. If Jesus gave us this example today, it might look a little something like this. There were once two men who each got a fantastic deal on some fabulous beachfront property. One of them was wise. What of you? And one, well, foolish. Ooh, now I could swim with the sharks before breakfast. <laughs> they both drew up plans for their dream home, but the wise man surveyed his property carefully. Better build back from the beach a little. Looks like we have solid rock back here for the foundation. The foolish man had other ideas. I want one of those amazing beach cottages where the fishes swim right up to the door. Both men got to work. The wise man met with a builder for his new home. I'd suggest steel beams. Can you bolt them directly into the rock? Absolutely. Excellent. Let's go. And the foolish man once again had other ideas. I like to think of my home as a work of art, made out of only things that you find on the beach, you know, like seashells, driftwood, seaweed. You want me to build your house out of seaweed? What, you got a better idea? No, I suggest you find something more durable, maybe build it on the rock. <laughs> Don't be so stuffy. We're creating art. Um, okay. At last, the two homes were complete. The wise man moved into his new home high upon the rock. Good book. Fresh lemonade, salty sea breezes. I'm all set. And the foolish man moved into his home right on the beach. Oh, <laughs> seaweed backdrop. Exquisite driftwood posts, shell columns. I am a true artiste. Within a short time, dark clouds began to form on the horizon. Looks like I'd better pull down the storm windows. Oh good, I could experience the rain on my driftwood porch. Maybe the fishes will swim right up to my door. The winds began to pick up. Raindrops spattered against the shore. High on the rock, gale force winds began to batter the wise man's home. On the beach though, waters began to rise. Yippee! Looks like I get to have one of those tropical huts with the water underneath. The wind and the waves beat against the foolish man's house. Uh, where did I put my magic rain boots and umbrella? Oh, I gotta get out of here. The waves sucked away the sand from underneath the foolish man's house. And the wind whipped against the tipsy driftwood frame and the entire structure collapsed. Oopsie. The foolish man stood drenched on the beach, staring at the remains of his house. On the mountainside, Jesus explained exactly what it all meant. So then, everyone who hears my words and puts them into practice is like a wise man. He builds his house on a rock. The rain comes down, the water rises, and the winds blow and beat against that house but it does not fall. But everyone who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man. He builds his house on sand. The rain comes down, the water rises, the winds blow and beat against that house, and it falls with a loud crash. The crowd listening to Jesus stared in amazement. He teaches with authority, like he's really in charge. Yeah, nothing like the other teachers. Jesus spent the entire day 
explaining how God wants us to live. And his closing word picture made it all clear. Anyone who puts into practice the teachings of Jesus build their lives on a foundation that is solid, no matter what storms will come. When you're training for a race or to become a better biker or hiker, you need to learn how to hear the sounds that are going on around you. When I'm on a hike, I see signs of rattlesnakes all the time. Check it out. Not just that, I actually see signs that say beware of rattlesnakes, but it's not good enough for me to just read those words. I have to listen just in case I hear that rattle. That could give me just enough time I need to get to safety. When we're training for life, hearing is about a lot more than just taking in some sounds. We need to learn how to hear from God. How do you do that? How can you hear from someone who seems so big and far away? Hello! Here's what's cool. God is big, it's true, but he isn't far away. His son Jesus made it possible for us to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. And God gave us a way to hear from him anytime we want. This book, the Bible, is filled with the words of God written down by many different people over hundreds of years. Reading the Bible is one of the best ways to discover what's true and important. It can help you know God better, and it can help us see if there's anything in our lives that we need to change. You can hear from God through songs, through other people, or maybe even through nature. Yeah, um, be careful in nature. So practice hearing from God. Read your Bible or have someone read it to you. If you don't have a Bible or you have questions about what you should read, you can ask a small group leader or your parents or someone else you trust. They'll be excited to help you start building your practice plan for hearing from God. So here's the one thing to remember from today. Practice hearing from God. When you practice listening to God's words, it can help you discover what it looks like to love God and love others each day. And I hope that's training you can all handle. Whoa! Look at these beautiful flowers. Ah, I think it's time to start practicing my sprinting. See you guys next week.